Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Marins, a proud Bristol alum and the first, first vice chair of our Alumni Association Steering Committee and your master of ceremonies for tonight's Bristol Awards. I'm thrilled to be here this event honoring the extraordinary alumni of Bristol Community College. When Bristol celebrated its 50th anniversary, we inaugurated this awards event to recognize that Bristol graduates are truly a gift to our community. Bristol alumni are the heart of all of our communities here in Bristol County and beyond. There are over 35,000 alumni of Bristol. They shape our communities in countless ways. So tonight, we are honoring leaders in banking, academia, entrepreneurship, advocates for seniors, needy children, and other communities, and those making a difference in the halls of government. When they all have in common, besides a Bristol Community College degree, is a dedication to serving their communities and giving back. That is what a Bristol education is all about. So thank you to tonight's supporters at the partners level, Bay Coast Bank and Fall River Municipal Credit Union. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So I invite everyone to continue to enjoy your salads during the next part of the program. In the meantime, I would like to introduce the president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Laura L. Douglas. President Douglas, thank you for your service to Bristol Community College and for giving alumni a voice here at the college. Though we will miss your leadership, we are so happy for you as you approach retirement in January, which I don't believe, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know you're not going away. You're not telling me the secret. All right. I know you'll always be a part of this community, and we hope that you'll join us for the Bristol Awards next year. So please, let's welcome our president, President Douglas. Well, thank you for that warm welcome, Steve, and welcome to everyone here this evening. Thank you for coming tonight to celebrate Bristol Community College alumni who are leaders in giving back to our communities. You must be so proud of your friends and family members that we are honoring here tonight. I know I am incredibly proud. I'd like to take a moment to thank Steve Martins, who is serving again as our Master of Ceremonies for this wonderful event, and we could not ask for a better MC. As many of you know, Steve is a leader in the New Bedford community, having served on the City Council for a decade. He now serves as Chief Revenue Officer at the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission. So every time you buy a lottery ticket, just think of Steve. He'll be very, very appreciative. Right, Steve? There we go. So we are so lucky to have Steve as the first Vice President of the Alumni Association Steering Committee and an active volunteer and leader in our alumni community. Steve, thank you for giving back and, like our awardees tonight, exemplifying what it means to be a Bristol alum. Thank you. During my tenure at Bristol Community College, I have had the privilege of seeing just how vital Bristol and our alumni are to our communities across all four of our communities, Attleboro, Fall River, New Bedford, Taunton, as well as online, students are transformed by their experience at Bristol. When students become alumni at Bristol, they are prepared and poised for further academic achievement. Right, Aisha? And they are also poised for fulfilling careers and community leadership. We remain committed to offering programs that allow Bristol graduates to shape our communities in profound ways. 
notably with the opening of the National Offshore Wind Institute, also known as the NAWI, in New Bedford last year. Bristol is offering new, cutting-edge academic and career opportunities that will shape the future of this region and beyond. Bristol alumni will be at the center of that future, which means we are in very good hands. We have an extraordinary group of honorees tonight who represent the best of what Bristol alumni offer to our community. Each of you, Alan, Paula, Von Marie, Aisha, Robin, and Scott, are committed to serving and bettering our communities. It is a pleasure to welcome and honor you tonight. Thank you to the Bristol Community College Foundation Board of Directors, the Bristol Alumni Association, and its Bristol Awards Committee for collaborating to make this event a success. We could not accomplish so much of what we do without your support and dedication. I'd like to recognize the members of the Bristol Awards Committee who are in attendance tonight. Steve Martins, Natalie Sousa, Joanne Brialt, and also with us tonight are other members of Bristol's Alumni Association Steering Committee, John Morris, Phil Oliveira, and Ed Sousa. I'd like to also recognize steadfast advocates for the college who are here tonight. The chair of Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, Joan Medeiros. Our interim trustee, Sylvia Jones. Sylvia, raise your hand, there you are. Sylvia Jones. Trustee Renee Clark. Members of the Bristol Community College Foundation Board of Directors, Frank Sousa III, President and Luke Travis, thank you, and of course our elected officials, Representative Alan Sylvia, Senator Michael Rodericks, and Representative Paul Schmidt. Thank you for coming, there you are. <laughs> thank you all for joining us tonight. Tonight's dinner was prepared and served by our wonderful Bristol Community College Culinary Arts students under the direction of Associate Professor of Culinary Arts, Chef Esteban Martinez. So let's give them a round of applause. And I always recommend that you leave room for dessert, right? Just just keep that in mind. So thank you for this wonderful meal. I know that even in retirement, the culinary arts program will keep me coming back to Bristol. So please enjoy your dinner and conversations, and we will begin our awards uh, uh, presentation after the buffet service. So once again, welcome to Bristol Awards. Thank you. So we are now pleased to present our awards. <clears throat> so the first awards tonight is the Maury Kusinitz Volunteer of the Year Award. Maury was an amazing supporter of the people of Fall River and Bristol Community College. His legacy of generosity lives on in this award. It will be presented by his granddaughter, Tara Ganyan. So please welcome Tara. So the recipient of the 2024 Mari Kuzinitz Volunteer of the Year Award is Scott Lopes, Bristol class of 2006. Scott P. Lopes is the Senior Vice President, Chief Human Resources and Talent Officer for Bay Coast Bank. He has 24 years of experience in the banking industry, beginning his career at the age of 16 as a part-time teller. Scott joined Bay Coast Bank in 2012 as Assistant Vice President, Training and Development Officer, a role that he has held onto until 2020, when he was promoted to the position of Vice President of Human Resources and Training and Development Officer. He received his associate degree in banking from Bristol Community College 
his bachelor's in business administration from Post University, and went on to achieve his master's in human resources from Cambridge College. He is also a graduate of the New England School of Financial Studies at Babson College and Leadership South Coast. Scott is being honored with this award for his leadership in supporting the first cohort of Bay Coast Scholars, a program that provides students with valuable professional experience at Bay Coast Bank while earning their associate's degree in business administration from Bristol and offering a seamless transfer pathway to UMass Dartmouth for further study. Scott has ensured that the Bay Coast Scholars have the resources and experience not only to learn various aspects of, aspects of banking, but also to assess what areas might interest them in the long term. He has been a leader, mentor, and friend as he championed traditionally underrepresented youth through this program. Let's congratulations to the winner of 2024, Maury Kusinis Volunteer of the Year Award, goes to Scott Lopes. Congratulations again, Scott. So the next award is the Alumni of the Year Award. This award has been given to an alum who, through professional achievement or personal dedication, has demonstrated outstanding commitment and accomplishment to his or her field or to the community. The recipient of the 2024 Alumna of the Year Award is Paula Bradley, Bristol Class of 1990. When the restaurant that Paula Bradley and her husband had owned closed, she started looking for a new direction. In her 50s at the time, her passion for advocating for seniors led to a job as an outreach director at the Portsmouth Senior Center. She began taking night classes and her son-in-law encouraged her to go back to school full-time at Bristol Community College. And after graduating in 1990, she pursued a degree in social work from Rhode Island College. She went back to working at the Portsmouth Senior Center, where she connected with Representative Patrick Kennedy during several of his visits. After he was elected in 1994, Representative Kennedy hired Paula as a field representative to reach out to seniors in Rhode Island. Upon Representative Kennedy's retirement in 2010, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse hired Paula as senior field representative do doing similar work. Paula has spent the last 30 years helping seniors across Rhode Island navigating government programs like Medicare, Social Security, veterans issues, immigration, and more. Letting seniors know how the congressional offices can help. Paula was recognized for 25 years of federal service by Senator Whitehouse in 2020. Paula is still working to help seniors in Rhode Island. Paula's connection to Bristol reaches generations of her family. Her son, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, and two grandchildren attended Bristol. 
Paula's story and her legacy of service to the community starting a new career later in life serves as a testament to the power of a Bristol education from people all walks of life. So congratulations to the 2024 Alumna of the Year, Paula Bradley. All right, I have to bring Paula out to more events. That was a great standing of ocean. <laughs> Congratulations, Paula, well deserved. So the next award is the Championing Diversity of Inclusion Award. The Alumni Association Steering Committee in partnership with the Foundation Board of Directors created this award of the year. This is the first time it has been given and I can promise you it will not be the last. This award honors a Bristol alum who has made a difference at Bristol in the community focusing on the following areas. LGBTQ+, black, ingenuous, people of color, religious affiliations, and gender equality. These contributions can relate to policy, volunteerism, and community outreach. The inaugural recipient of the Champion Diversity and Inclusion Award is Vaughn Marie Moniz, Bristol Class of 2008. Vaughn Marie Moniz is the founder of Latinas in the South Coast, a networking group for Latina professionals and small business owners, and a founding member, member, president and CEO of the South Coast Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the region's first Hispanic chamber. She also holds the role of program experience manager or entrepreneurship for all, also known as E for All, a nonprofit organization dedicating to guiding aspiring entrepreneurs through business classes and mentorship, fostering business initiation, growth, and transformation. Recognized for her contributions within the Hispanic community and empowering women, Vaughn Marie was nominated by State Representative Tony Cabral and honored with a prestigious 2023 Latino Excellence Award from the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus. So congratulations to the first ever winner of the Championing Diversity and Inclusion Award, Vaughn Marie Moniz. Congratulations, Vaughn. And the next award is the Distinguished Black or African American Alumna of the Year Award. 
This award is given to an alum who has demonstrated professional success and service to the community. The recipient of the 2024 Distinguished Black or African American Alumna of the Year Award is Esha Boyd, Bristol Class of 2022. Esha has a mission to ensure that children and families have a quality of life that promotes thriving, not just surviving. Esha was a student here at Bristol. She served as a volunteer with a Pace Child Care Works program and intern at the United Way of Greater New Bedford. Some of her work there included case management and community outreach, connecting residents with local resources such as food assistance and education. She also assisted with a community free diaper program. Esha graduated from Bristol with an associate's degree and was honored with a prestigious Newman Civic Fellowship, recognizing her demonstrated commitment to focusing on the best solutions for the many challenges facing communities locally, nationally, and internationally. Esha is a current student at Bridgewater State University and will be graduating in May with high honors. She currently works at St. Vincent's Home as a residential counselor for children. She is also an intern at High Point Treatment Center in Brockton, providing case management for individuals with substance use disorders. She has been accepted into the Advanced Standing Master's Social of Work program at Simmons University. <laughs> Esha made her way to Bristol after experiencing many challenges. She faced incarceration as a teenager, but later became a successful business owner. She came to Bristol hoping to build a career that would not only serve her life's mission, but it would also inspire her daughters who are here tonight to pursue college. She has continued to serve Bristol in numerous ways, most recently appearing with her daughters in Bristol television commercials and on billboards, encouraging others to enroll here at Bristol. And we thank you for that. So congratulations to the 2024 Distinguished Black African American Alumna of the Year, Esha Boyd. Congratulations, Esha. The next award is the Alumni Service Award. This award honors alumni making significant contributions to their profession or community and who share a commitment to serve others in their community. The recipient of the 2024 Alumni Service Award goes to Robin Worthington, Bristol class of 2001. Robin is the Department Chair of History, Government, and Economics here at Bristol. She has taught courses in U.S. history, including American women's history and American Indian history. In addition to her, her work in the classroom, Robin has served as a member of the College Governance Council, the College-Wide Curriculum Committee, the Holocaust and Genocide Center Advisory Board, as an Equity Fellow for the Lash Center for Teaching and Learning, 
and as faculty fellow for the Office of Civic Engagement. Robin holds an associate's degree in liberal arts from Bristol Community College, a bachelor's degree in history from Wellesley College, and a master's degree in history from the University of Connecticut. She has translated academic excellence to outstanding teaching here at Bristol. She received the Dale P. Parnell Distinguished Faculty Award from the American Association of Community Colleges in 2022. And this award recognizes faculty who not only exemplify excellence in academic setting, but also work outside the classroom to help their students achieve success. In 2023, Professor Worthington was selected by Bristol Community College Student Senate to deliver the last lecture at commencement. This award honors faculty members who have affected students' education in their lives in significant ways. Professor Worthington has gone above and beyond to serve her students, the college, and the entire community. Congratulations to the 2024 Alumni Service Award, Robin Worthington. Congratulations, Professor Worthington. I now would like to introduce John Morris, the Bristol class of 2023, and a member of the Alumni Association Steering Committee to present the Paragon Award. John is a veteran of the United States Air Force and has been a leader among Bristol Students Veterans, serving as the president of Bristol Students Veterans of American Chapter. He also served as the student trustee during his time here. He recently began his professional role as Outreach Coordinator for Student Veterans of America, a national organization leading service, research, programs, and advocacy for veterans in higher education, empowering student veterans to lead and live their best lives. John is here tonight to introduce Representative Alan Sylvia, so please, let's welcome John. Thank you, Steve. I would now like to present the 2024 Paragon Award to represent Al Alan Sylvia, Bristol class of 1974. <laughs> Representative Sylvia, would you please make your way to join me on the stage? The Paragon Award is the most distinguished award for a Bristol Community College alum. The awardee is a community leader with outstanding service and a demonstrated loyal interest in Bristol Community College. Representative Al Alan Sylvia's entire life has been about public service. After graduating from BMC Durfee High School, Sylvia enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and served during the Vietnam conflict. He graduated from Bristol in 1974 and then from Northeastern University with a bachelor's in criminal justice. He, he then went on to receive a master's of science degree from Salve Regina University. Representative Sylvia went on to become a police officer in the city of Fall River. He has dedicated, sorry, he has served as a detective in the major crimes division for more than 20 years. Additionally, he served several years in the sexual abuse unit investigating crimes of violence against children. He developed and implemented a sexual abuse prevention curriculum within the Fall River School District called the SPEAK program, and he provided community education in areas of child abuse prevention, rape, elder abuse, and substance abuse. Representative Sylvia's commitment to the Bristol Community College runs very deep. An advocate for student veterans, Bristol established the Representative Alan Sylvia Veteran Scholarship. 
which supports students who are active in or retired from military duty. Since 2013, Sylvia has served in the Massachusetts House of Representatives, representing the 7th Bristol District, which encompasses the south end of Fall River. He fights for the safety and welfare of the people of Fall River and of the Commonwealth every day, and stands as a pillar of this community. I am honored to congratulate the 2024 Paragon Award winner, Representative Alvin Sylvia. Okay, I'm going to keep my remarks about 45 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. I, I seem to say that every time. How about a hand for the culinary staff? I mean, that was an incredible, really, uh, really enjoyed that. Of course, I want to thank, uh, and I am honored and humbled to have been nominated uh, for this award by the Bristol Community College Foundation. Uh, and to Joanne Baralt, where is she? She nominated me. Joanne, thank you so much for the nomination. I, uh, this may be the shortest speech of my career. Uh, my colleagues know that I usually never write anything. I usually shoot from the hip. And as a result, I get in enormous trouble. And uh, I, I tend to uh, go on for about a half an hour. So I have something prepared. I, I may go off course a little bit, but um, that's the way it goes these days. I, I, uh, it'll be short because I find it difficult to talk about myself, uh, and uh, it, it'll go easy. Um, first, I want to thank my family because um, they're really the backbone to my uh, entire career. My daughter, Tara, who is sitting right here at our table, um, her husband, David Dubois, my grandchildren, Alia, who is, uh, wave your hand, Alia. <laughs> Alia is a sophomore at uh, Dartmouth High School. And Zachary, Zachary is a senior and he'll be attending uh, Maritime uh, Academy in, in the fall. So excited, uh, great, great students. And I'm very proud of them. My, my third grandchild is in here with us. He's, uh, because he's serving in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he is going to graduate next month from the United States Marine Corps Military Police Academy in Missouri. Uh, so, the, you know, the, it doesn't fall far. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, he'll be uh, stationed in uh, Camp Lejeune, uh, North Carolina. So, very happy. I'm very proud of, of all of them. Also, uh, this evening, my sister is here. She's at the Fall River Municipal Table, uh, Municipal Credit Union. I wanted to give the credit union a plug. Uh, my sister and brother, Michael, uh, have been strong supporters of me and, and are there at every moment. Uh, I also want to mention, uh, mention so many good friends who are in the room. Um, also at my table, uh, Tom Pasternak, who has been a, a pretty much a lifelong friend and who has uh, uh, done so much for our community. Uh, Tom, thank you for your friendship, guidance, and support. Joan, of course, Joan Medeiros, who is no stranger to Bristol Community College because of her, her uh, chairmanship on the board. Uh, thank you, Joan, uh, so much for all, all that you do. Clara Fallon, who is my legislative director. Um, if it wasn't for her, I don't even know if I could turn my computer on. Uh, <laughs> she's the one who sends out all the emails and responds to the 400 emails that we get a day. Uh, so I can't thank, thank her enough. Um, I was uh, very surprised because, uh, you know, I was blessed to have two careers, police department for 23 years, 19 as a detective in the major crimes division, and uh, of course now nearly 12 years as a member of the House of Representatives, and I loved both uh, and continue to love what I do. But uh, tonight I, I noticed there was somebody here who was a familiar place, face to me, Tom Joquin, who was my partner in the major crimes division for, for I don't know how many years. Happens, happens to be here. Uh, 
Also, a heartfelt thanks to uh, Dr. Laura Douglas, who, uh, who contacted me to let me know that uh, her plans to retire prior to making it public knowledge. You, Alan, I want to let you know before I, I make a public announcement that I'll be retiring. And I, I was shocked to hear that, of course. There are some people you want to see retire. Uh, Laura was not one of those people. She came in 2017, felt like it was yesterday. Uh, so my first response to her, not thinking that she was calling me to, I thought she was calling me to invite me to a meeting, uh, was, uh, Laura, you're too young to retire. Don't retire, please. One hour after that phone call, one hour, and Clara is here to attest to it, I received a call from Rep. Schmidt, Paul Schmidt. Alan, I want to let you know before it becomes public. I said, what is this? <laughs> All in the same day. I can't take it. A gentleman and a, a person who I just loved every moment serving with, Paul Schmidt, Representative Schmidt. <laughs> Laura, Laura has been an uh, indelible influence on the students and faculty at uh, Bristol Community College, shaping the institution in ways that will have a far reaching effects uh, for many years to come. Uh, my colleagues, some of which are here this evening, um, I can't say enough. You know, Senator Rodericks, uh, the Senate Chair of Ways and Means, I, I talk to him every other day. So who do you know who talks to the Senate Chair of Ways and Means every other day? <laughs> so you can imagine some of the things we talk about. <laughs> so I talk with him more. I talk with him more than his Senate colleagues do. Um, so uh, we're very close, and uh, when uh, the senator starts the show, because every month we do a show, Keith, thank you very much for, uh, Keith is always there, of course, running the studio at Bristol Community College. Every month we do a TV show called Voices from the Hill. And uh, I, think, I think it's a great little show. I wonder sometimes who watches this, but when I'm in Stop and Shop or in Walmart, I have a little old ladies come over to me and say, hey, I just saw you on TV today, Voices on the Hill. And you know, every time we do that show, I, 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 it's a, what are we gonna talk about? We end up filling the complete time without ever having a plan or an agenda of what we, there's obviously so much going on. Uh, but Senator Rodericks always starts his show off with welcoming, of course, all the viewers and then introducing, as he says, the best legislative delegation on Beacon Hill. Now, I, I agree with him, but it, I give them all the credit because um, Representative uh, State uh, Senator Rodericks, Representative Carol Fiola, whose legislative aide is here today, thank you, she's always taking photos for me, uh, and, and Representative Paul Schmidt, and I'll include Representative Haddad because um, she has been a, a strong colleague and friend. Um, they make me look good. They have made me look good, in spite of myself sometimes. Uh, so I am so thankful for them, their friendship, and the good work that we have done together. So thank you so much. Um, I was honorably discharged in, uh, from the United States Marine Corps in June of 1972. That was 57 years ago. I know I don't look that old. <laughs> I can still make the stairs without holding onto the railing. But I'm, I'm getting close. Um, so that was 57 years ago. I already knew before I um, returned to Fall River that I wanted to attend Bristol Community College. Um, so less than 90 days, I arrived mid-June, less than 90 days, I had registered and already started classes at Bristol Community College on the Ellsbury Street campus. Imagine, I'm, how many people here alive still remember the Ellsbury Street campus? Imagine, quite a time, long time ago. And uh, I was there to take my, my, uh, Durfee Street, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ellsbury, Ellsbury, we're here now. I didn't take my Prevagen today. <laughs> so, so, it was, so it was, uh, yeah, it was Durfee Street campus. And uh, so I was the basic college courses, you know, math, uh, biology, science, some basic courses that you need before you even get involved with a major, your major. And um, 
I, it was the first time I had ever received an A in my life. That's pretty sad to say. But I wasn't a great high school student, so uh, I received an A uh, in biology of all subjects. I didn't think I was going to do very well in. Uh, I received an A. I was so excited to get an A at Bristol Community College. Never had an A in high school, you know. So uh, it was a big deal for me. Now the, the first, the first, uh, I was the first in my family to attend college. Um, my parents were as excited as I was about me attending Bristol Community College. My uh, parents worked in the textile industry all their lives, worked very hard. My mother graduated from Diffie High School in the early 40s, and my father had a seventh grade education. However, they both knew the importance of education. After my, uh, I remember my father's words after my first day attending Bristol Community College. And I came home and he said to me, uh, uh, what are you going to take up? Of course, not what you're going to major in. <laughs> he didn't know anything much about college. What are you going to take up in college? I said, Dan, I'm, I think I'm going to do criminal justice and law enforcement. He said, what do you want to be a cop for? <laughs> Why don't you be a school teacher? You know, school teachers are making almost $8,000 a year. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Now, if you make $8,000 a year, you better. You, you're probably living in a homeless encampment. Uh, but uh, I never, I'll never forget um, his remarks that day. Um, so after I, uh, I completed that first semester, I scheduled an appointment with uh, uh, Professor Ray, Raymond LaVirtue. Uh, uh, incredible man. I think he was here at Bristol Community College for almost 30 years. And uh, I was so nervous about meeting the director of the criminal justice program. Uh, I was, uh, when I came, I parked in the administrative parking lot, which is a, just a hundred and a half yards from here where we're sitting right now. And I was the only one on this campus with a suit and tie on. I was the only one that day. I was very nervous about meeting him. Um, I wanted to get enrolled in the uh, criminal justice program. He uh, greeted me in the hallway, invited me into his office, and he had a pipe. In 1972, you could actually smoke a pipe in this building. He had a pipe in his hand, and he said, do you, uh, do you have family members who are in law enforcement? I said, no, sir. He said, well, why do you uh, want to go into law enforcement? I said, I, uh, I would like to you know, help people, uh, improve the lives of people. He said, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Welcome. He says, you did great in your, in the, in the, your basic uh, courses. I said, thank you very much. So, um, you know, he was, he was my mentor, and he became a very good friend. He followed me, my graduating from, from uh, Northeastern University. He would call me, send me notes. Because uh, in those early days, we didn't have computers, nor did we have a cell phone. He would send me written notes. When I graduated, when I received my graduate degree from Salve, I was, uh, of course, had been a, a detective in the Major Crimes Division, he would invite me to the school on occasion and I would uh, speak to students in, in a class. But uh, I was very surprised, and I, I told uh, Dr. Douglas this tonight because most people don't know it, but uh, after 15 years, uh, he, he invited me to the, to the college. He, he called me at the police station, asked me if I had some time this week to stop by. I said I did, I'd stop by and see him. So I, I thought he was gonna ask me if I wanted to uh, if I could speak uh, to a class. And he said, no, I, Alan, I, I was wondering if you would be interested in teaching. I said, right away, I immediately thought of my father, right? My, my father would have been thrilled. Uh, and uh, I said, what would I teach? He said, oh, how about criminalistics or, or, or investigation? You're a great investigator. I said, well, I said, I never thought of it, but I, I, I'm just, I was almost brought to tears, the fact that this person who, uh, you know, was my mentor was asking me to teach. Lo and behold, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't in the cards. About two weeks later, I had a skiing accident. I was with a very good friend, Bruce Clark, who just passed away. He was the principal of Durfee. Uh, I had a skiing accident on Loon Mountain, broke 17, had 17 fractures in my right leg, uh, ankle, and two surgeries, and as a result, um, never did get that opportunity to teach, but it was, uh, it was a great honor be, being asked. Um, Ray LaVirtue, uh, Professor LaVirtue, passed away 2014 at the age of 78 after, 
as I mentioned, spending so many years here, not only as a professor, but as an administrator, and, and was an incredible person. Um, I also want to congratulate all of those awardees, Scott and others who are so well deserved uh, uh, for what you do uh, in our community. Uh, this program tonight, though, is not about all of these awards. It's much bigger than that. It's, uh, it's about dreams and courage. It's about a community college that builds confidence in students who never thought they would or could attend college. And against all odds, did. And that changed their lives and the lives of so many people. As I approached the autumn of my life, and I said approach, I'm not ready to go anywhere. Uh, I don't even have an opponent this time. I'm so blessed. Uh, <laughs> as long as they keep electing me, I will keep doing what I do. I love doing what I do. Um, it is my hope when it's all said and done, they will say uh, he was a humble, compassionate, and made a difference in the lives of many, many people. Success, success doesn't come from what we do occasionally, it comes from what we do consistently. It all starts with a strong educational foundation, and it begins right here at Bristol Community College. Thank you for this great honor. Congratulations again, Representative Sylvia. So wow, what an inspiring night this has been. Tonight we have seen the incredible impact that Bristol Community College alumni in our community. I know I speak for all the alumni in this room tonight when I say that I am proud to call myself a Bristol Community College alum. So thank you all for being here tonight to support the Extraordinary Institution and for joining us here tonight. And I want to thank you and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations.